All right, hello everyone, we are back. And we have another tutorial video here. As you can see, the golden shot button has appeared in the bottom left corner. And I'm gonna do some shots for you guys, if you guys don't mind and wanna see my approach on some things. First, just real briefly, I want to let me just back up out of here. And I just want to show you guys this. This is a new group that uh, me, Kevin Warren, and Steve Taylor just started. It's basically an educational group which focuses on, you know, posting only educational content. It makes it easier to find my content. Uh, in addition, it will be easier to find those guys' content as well. Just kind of one united place. And the posts are, you know, drama-free, just kind of uh, focus on, um, you know, education and education only, you know, teaching the game towards 1 through 11. Uh, we're working on a website right now that's going to be, you know, hopefully uh, very user-friendly for you guys. So the name of the gr group is Learner B Burn, and if you want to find it on Facebook... Um, you know, just do a search, find it, and, uh, you know, we're looking for some of the top members to, you know, come in and who want to learn the game. And if you think you would be a good fit here, then, you know, by all means, uh, apply and, you know, we'll accept you. So, just wanted to pitch that to you guys real quick, just so you know, um, you know, the, the biggest thing about making another group like that is just really to get, uh, like, for instance, I'm going to put my tutorial in there. It's just going to be an easier kind of clutter-free zone where I can post stuff, Steve can post stuff, whatever, and you're not going to have to cycle through all these posts. Everything's just going to be much more easily laid out. With that being said, let's go in and do some golden shooting. So both of these holes are going to be very, very easy, especially from the rookie tees. So I'm assuming we are going to get through this with relatively little difficulty. And, you know, I played this in rookie. Um, the hardest thing here is going to be the limited ball guide. But if you see, my accuracy is at 66, which is about 1.7 per ring. I always play this on um with a long iron at max distance so i'm going to play it very spot on to that and let's take a note here you can see that the wind is going to be between three and four miles per hour um, you can see it in that little indicator so let's think about this if the wind is um 1.7 per ring three miles per hour would be roughly Maybe a ring and three quarters. Four miles per hour would be maybe two and a half. So you need to keep all your ring adjustments between a ring and three quarters if it's a low wind. And two and a half if it's a max wind. So keeping that fact in mind, that's how all of our shots are going to be played on this hole. Here you can see we got one roughly right in the middle. So we're going to play this at two rings. Now what I like to do here, um, if ever possible, I like to do about four top spin. Let me see. I'm not going to be able to do it. So see we're into the wind, which means we're going to need to play around with the spin just a little bit. Now what I like to do for the side spin, I like to do right around one. It just seems to kind of even keel it uh, out, you know, back towards the hole. Um, additionally, you know, we're going to land just a tiny bit short on the island because we're kind of forced to a little bit. Um, additionally, as you can see, I'm going to kind of have to go into just a touch of power with this approach. And let's see what this looks like. You can see not too bad at shooting off just a tiny bit to the right. The hardest thing here is going to be distance control on this one. Let's see what I get here from this Scarlet. Junglist, of course. Titans, right? Oh, Kingmakers. Ooh, are they stepping up their game? Not Titans anymore? I think uh, I think sales numbers might be a little bit down on, on this medium chest. 
beefing up the prize just a little bit. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to do a couple more shots for you guys at least. But I do think, you know, you guys are going to have relatively, you know, straightforward approach. I'd really like to focus on the hard hole as opposed to the medium hole. But I will do a couple for you guys just so you guys can. And, and keep in mind, you know, 3.5, you know, that's going to be the two ring adjustment. Remember I said I'm going to keep all my adjustments between one and three quarters and two and a half rings. And if it's a midwind, I'm just going to do, you know, right around two. So... Um, additionally, you know, any headwind like that, we're going to back off of the top spin a bit. I'm going to do about three somewhere in here. Notice how we're landing a little bit shorter on the island. And see if I can't play the rings. Again, might just go just, just briefly into power. Not a lot. See if this runs out. Looks pretty good on the line. Just missed. So, you know, I'm, I'm half tempted to, you know, if I get that yellow ring, more than satisf satisfied to just, you know, take what I've got. It'd be nice to pick up that hold in one. You can see pretty much your standard side spin is going to be one to the right for this, if you land centered on the island. Um, in... In the case of the last two I just played, you know, I had a little bit more of a side win, so I should have jacked it up a little bit. So here you can see I'm going to be able to play a little bit more towards max, and you're going to see me cheat the one number, maybe up to one and a quarter. And since I don't really have to go into power this time, I'm going to use about three and a half backspin. So look what I'm doing with where I'm setting up, kind of like right there. 3.1, that's going to be my adjustment that I mentioned, which is going to be a just a smidge under two rings. Hopefully I can get some luck here. Like I said, if, you know, for some instance, I do get in that amber ring, that circular ring there, you know, I'm, I'm more than content to just kind of stop. Um, I'll hit one more for you guys since there is one more far out. And, I mean, it'd be nice to get the hold in one. But at the same time, you know, I, I really don't need the Kingmakers that much. That uh, I'd rather focus on getting you guys some extra bonus time on the other as opposed to this hard. But I am glad that we did this because here you're seeing downwind. And I do want to let you know that once the wind starts to get down, I start to crank things up a little bit more. So here you're going to see me play this. And notice how I'm just kind of keeping it just to the right. This is kind of like the, the money spot right in here, just to the right of the hole. Um, there is a little bit of angle to the wind, so I might want to just shift that over a little bit. But additionally from this, we're going to go you know, just a little bit over two rings, kind of right in here. Let's see if I can't get a perfect ball. I'm trying to stay. Ah, great ball. So that was my first great ball. It's going to cost me any chance at the hole in one. Uh, it stinks because I have really good speed. Would have given me a good chance at that. But no worries. Um, you know, just be very critical with your, um, you know, timing. You can see with a well-lined up shot like I had, you know, that's going to push my ball out about two yards. You know, 1.7 plus some extra maybe hill roll to the side. So you might have quite a bit of loss of precision if you're not too careful. But... Let's jump in here to the hard hole. I have another shot for this hole for you guys. Another easy hole. Um, it is, you know, supposed to be relatively challenging. But, uh, you know, I should be able to give you guys more than enough tools to easily do this. So first, let's take a look at our wood. It's two per ring. So this is actually going to play very similarly to a viper. So what you're going to see me do... Uh, and again, the hardest part is going to be more than anything, uh, the low ball guide. So we're just going to kind of have to estimate our spot a little bit and kind of go for there. We're going to also have to go for some curl. So no matter what, no matter what, what direction the wind is, we're going to make sure that we always have full right spin at the very least. Um, so it's two per ring. 
on our max adjustment, which I usually use, and I usually use an additional from the rookie tee, I use an additional 10% on the adjustment as well. So if the wind is five, I'll go 5.5. I'll switch it to 5.5, and with a 2.0, I'll go almost three rings, because two times three is six, which would mean that you're adjusting for six miles per hour. You need to come in just slightly on that. So that's the logic behind that. Um, and you can see that the, the winds are going to be somewhere between 5 and 8. So that means that we should keep all of our adjustments between 2.5 and, and 4 rings. So every adjustment you make should be between those. You know, that's going to be like your white ring, the edge of the white ring, like the very front of the white ring on the outer, and then the inner is going to be the red so let's take a look at a shot now that we talked about that and more about this is just going to be you know kind of setting the spot I like to use about three backspin for my natural and you know kind of similarly to how I said you know I try to land uh, maybe right in here somewhere as my natural you can see where that landing zone is, kind of just short of that green, that green, that one green grid that you see going up there. And like I said, two per ring. I like to do 10% extra adjustment. So you're gonna see me go three rings here. Maybe even just a fraction more. Additionally to that, we're gonna to need to do some curl, maybe about this much, to get the ball shooting over here towards the hole. Let's see what this looks like. Does look like I got a little collar there. It's just stopping. But you can see that it's shooting over there towards the hole. That's a bad break. I should have got that. Uh, should have had that last ring. It was a kind of a bad bounce on what I just got for the second hop. It kind of bounced like a dud. It doesn't always do that. So that's one of the things that you do have to kind of worry about. Just trying to set that right. Again, I'm going to do, you know, since it's so downwind, I'm going to do about three every time. And keep in mind that, you know, in terms of my bounce, my second bounce I'm putting right in front, you know, in case you guys can't see it, right in front of that green grid. Like I'm using the green as kind of an aim tool. Um, and you can see where I'm putting my guide. Additionally to that, you know, as I mentioned, I'm going to go a little bit, 10% uh, more adjustment, four and a half rings here. So we're going to try to get a little bit more curl going. Let's see what this one looks like. There you can see a little bit more run out. And it, it didn't bounce dead like that last one. But you can see that I have it going right towards the hole. So what we're going to try to do is I'm going to try to start backing off just a tiny bit on that backspin. I'm going to try to get in there a bit tighter for you guys. And again, you know, perfect ball timing is going to be of the utmost important when you guys are um, rolling through these golden shots. So here you can see it's not as downwind. So I'm definitely going to ease off. I'm only going to go two and a half backspin. But we're going to try to do the same landing zone to where I'm hitting the fairway right in front of this green grid over there. Kind of like right in here. Additionally to this... Um, you know, we need to do the 10% that I mentioned, the 10% extra, which will be 7.2-ish for our ring adjustment, which will be basically three and a half rings. So there's three and a half. Um, keep in mind that you have a much more pointed wind, so you're going to see me do some over curl. I'm going to start to curl it a little bit harder because it needs to get back farther to the left here. And there you see it sneaking in. I have very good speed now. Two and a half backspin. And it was all about just giving it just a tiny bit more curl. Keep in mind that wind is right to left, really resisting your curl. So you need to up it just a little bit. So notice what I did with my curl there. Ooh, got my handbringer finally on this account. Notice what I did with my curl there was different than what I did last time. So I'm going to do six more shots for you guys just so you can see. And hopefully, you know, hopefully I can get this hole in one on this one. It'd be nice to clear everything. Maybe we can even go back and try to get that last 
that last one as well. And here you can see, you know, the wind's kind of changing. You can see power's probably not going to come into play. But keep in mind that we just did two and a half on a side wind. We're only going to do two backspin now because it's not going to want to, it's going to resist running out. But make sure that you put it, your second hop in line with that one green grid. You know, this just keeps you kind of a good distance away from the bunker. And aside from that, we're just going to do curl to, and keep in mind, you know, with a 10% extra, we're looking at four rings. 7.7 .7 is roughly four rings. So that's what I'm going to shoot for here. Uh, additionally to that, keep in mind with the curl. So we're going to do some curl to get this shooting towards the hole. It does look like it might, might come up a little short. But you can see the general gist here. Um, the one thing that you want to avoid is really, you know, cranking down too much. It will, once it gets to the hole, it'll just run forever. So you really got to nestle it up there. So that's why you see me being a little bit conservative. Because you really don't have a lot of room for error. So I'm really not going to go lower than two. I'm going to keep it at the two, even though I'm straight into the face here again. I'm going to keep it at the two, and what I might do is I might just do a little bit more of an overplay since we're going more towards a max. So notice how I'm still pointing at that same grid. 10% extra would be six rings, but let's just say, you know, just for sake of argument here, that I go closer to four rings. So that's what you're going to see me do here. Additionally to that, you know, make sure you put that curl on. Perfect ball, of course. You know, perfect ball is going to be what helps you get this shooting towards the target. So, and you can see, and there you can see it almost start to drop off. So that came in too hot. So that just shows you how, what, how narrow the level of tolerance is. Because I added so little, maybe half a ring, and it went from being short to almost outside that blue ring. Like that's how close it was to completely leaving. But notice how this is just going to come down to setting the proper amount of curl and picking a good landing zone. And this is kind of just where I like to land it. Um, keep in mind, now that we're downwind again, we're going to have to crank up the backspin again. So I'm going to almost use three rings. I'm just going to cheat in just a tiny bit because of some similar results that we've been seeing. Again, I'm going to be aiming kind of at that, uh, that same dark green line up there on the green. Additionally, extra 10% is going to be 8.2. So we're going to go at least maybe 4.2 rings. Additional to that, just make sure that you do your curl and try to set the proper amount. And I did hit a great ball. You know, that's going to shot my, it's going to cost me. It's going to shoot my ball out to the left and it might not recover. And there you can see that's exactly what happened. So perfect ball timing is going to be upmost critical, especially when you get down to these last few chests. You can get away with that a little bit early on, but you're going to have to get a little bit more honed in. And you can definitely get these. I got these in the tournament on which divisions did I get this in? I got it in Rookie once, and I got it in Pro as well, and I got it in Masters. I got this in every division, so it is going to be very doable. So again, same MO, we're, we're, we're aiming at that same spot. We're going to play this like a six win because 10% extra, just like I've been doing. So we're going to come here with 10% extra and just try to focus on how much curl we need. Perfect ball timing. Hopefully, let's see if we can get some luck here. Shooting in. Is it enough curl? Sneak in. Not quite. Almost snuck in that, that last. But you can see how critical speed is and also setting the proper amount of curl. But you can see you can get you can very well get that to run in with just you know minor, minor tweaks on what I'm doing. Here we're going to, you know, maybe set two and a quarter on the top spin. We're going to try to get this. And one of the things, notice that it's it's pointed very left. So it's going to very much be resisting curl. So we're going to make sure that we add extra curl. But additionally to that, keep in mind that it's 10% uh, extra on the adjustment. So we're going to go 3.5 rings here as well. 
So 3.5 there, side of the bunker. And we're going to have to also up up the curl. Ah, so the great ball is going to shoot it out to the left again. This is something that you just got to, you know, for sure have happen. One of the things that you could technically do is you could run it out with less backspin, but I think you're going to have less control over the ball. And you could kind of play it that way intentionally to kind of roll out slow, like the way that you're seeing me do there. Um, and you may be able to get it that way, but you're going to have a lot less ball control. So that's why I really recommend this backspin and just kind of, you know, honing it and setting it to a good proper amount. Here I'm going to do about maybe two and two and a quarter, two and three quarter, two and one quarter, maybe two and a third. You know, same type of landing zone. We're going to try to get as aggressive here. Use hopefully the proper amount of curl. If anything, I'm going to try to miss right <laughs> since I'm tired of missing left. So we'll see if we can do that. With the extra 10%, we're going to go to four rings. Additionally, you know, it is curling this way, so we can probably back off a little. But at the same time, I haven't missed right yet. So I still want to make sure that, you know, I give it a good go. And I'm going to up it just a tiny bit. And here it is coming, sneaking in. Oh, that's just, that's a robbery right there. Right on the very front edge. Would have been nice to sneak that in. At the very least, you guys have seen some great guides here. Um... You know, very, very minor tweaks on what I need to do. So, you know, just kind of hone in, especially once you eliminate those uh, those first three chests. Just try to get, you know, a little bit more distance control. Um, trying to focus on not getting it to come up short. You can just start bringing it in with a little bit more speed. Back off a little bit. Uh, try to run it into the pin. Um but as you can see, you know, lots of good attempts there. Um, you know, I probably would have had uh, that amber chest with, you know, two or three great balls that I hit in those six or eight balls. So uh, I, I think probably one of them at least would have been online enough to actually maybe sneak in there. So, you know, good luck with your golden shot. I think you guys will be able to breeze through it, especially if you can... Um, just kind of hone in on these tips and strategies with, you know, keep it in mind, the direction of the wind, how strong it's going is going to dictate how much curl and how much backspin to apply. Try to keep it somewhere in the two to three bars and just landing very close to the fringe. Notice how close my second hop is to the fairway in the fringe. That land zone is going to be critical. So you need to keep a very consistent land zone to where I am if you want to use my guide successfully. So keep that in mind and set your second. Be very critical of where you're setting your second bounce. And then everything else should just go into place. So good luck there, guys. Let me know how it goes. And, uh, you know, hopefully you guys breeze through these. Like I said, you know, it can be done uh, very easily. Um, I got it in the tournaments, just having a little bit of trouble here with the uh, with the chest. But I'm going to run another account as well. Uh, I'll probably record it, and if I have better results, I'll, I'll I'll be sure to let you guys know. So, good luck. See you guys on the next video.